Hello and welcome to the Bronco Exchange. I'm your host, Dr. Shanessa Fenner. And today I have a very, very special guest. He has actually become a very, very good friend of mine. He is national jazz saxophonist recording artist, Reggie Cogrington. Hey, Reggie, how you doing? Hey, Shanessa, how you doing today? I am doing great. All right, thank you for having me. No it's problem. It's good to be back. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. So, Reggie, for those of um, individuals who don't know who you are, mm -hmm. tell us all about Reggie Cogrington. Well, I grew up here in Fayetteville. Fayetteville is my home, and uh, I guess I could say I've been here uh, most of my life. Of course, I, you know, I went to college in Washington, D.C. at Howard University and, um, you know, left there, and I've Love, uh, my, California is kind of becoming my second home. Where did you go uh, to high school, Reggie? I went to E.E. E. Smith okay. High School. I'm a Golden Bull. Okay. I graduated in uh, 86. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, time goes by fast, but I, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Uh, something about Smith, just the unity and the love. And everybody says that about their high school. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, it really... It gave me some good, it gave me a good foundation, mm -hmm. and uh, I miss a lot of those days because back then when we were in school, we didn't have to worry about bills and oh, yeah. responsibilities exactly. and all of those things, and I, and I often find myself reflecting back on, you know, uh, you know a few teachers and, and even some of my peers uh, during that time that... Uh, you know, just made life fun. Yeah, I, even though I didn't think it was so much fun mm -hmm. uh, back then, but I realized that, uh, particularly as I've gotten older, um, everybody we meet uh, in the course of growing up can have a either a positive or negative impact on our lives. And mm -hmm. um, but when I look at it. Uh, Except for getting kicked out of band class at mm -hmm. Smith, oh wow! <laughs> I had uh, it was it was a great experience, and actually that motivated me to um, become the person and, and musician that I am today. And uh, of course, like I said, after I graduated from Smith, mm -hmm. I went to Howard University and uh, studied music. And um, ever since then, I've just been. I've been recording, uh, I've recorded 11 CDs, about to have a new single coming out on August the 12th that goes to radio. And uh, I'm just out here enjoying life, even with all the, some of the challenges. I, I, I find every day I try to take my lemons and turn them into lemonade. Okay. Now, Reggie, can you tell us, at what age did you first discover that you love music? And then, of course, you were talented. You know, my mother, uh, my mother Joyce, often tells me uh, when I was four years old, uh, there was a band. I think it was South Carolina State Marching Band, and they were up at E. e. Smith at that time, uh, and or it could have been Phil said I'm not sure of the exact location, but she said I heard, you know, uh, them playing this rhythm and. She said, I grabbed the fence at four years old and started rocking and shaking. And mm -hmm. She told my dad, you know, uh, said, that boy has music in him. And so they told me, they said, even as a child, I just showed uh, strong interest in music and excitement uh, over it. And, and uh, so I would say it started when I was four. And then, you know, when I got to the fifth grade, uh, I was I started playing clarinet mm. and after playing clarinet for uh, all the way from fifth grade to the eighth grade I switched and switched over to saxophone but uh, you know uh, when I was 10 like I said my father was a band director and so he would always bring home different instruments and I found a clarinet sitting around the house and, and I got it and I just started dabbling in it 
And next thing I knew, I was, um, you know, I could play a little, sounds like Mary had a little lamb, and Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. You know, I would go to school and, you know, I had a, a couple of female friends that would come and visit me in the fifth grade and I'd pull out my little clarinet and try to serenade them. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you, know, you know, I said, hmm, there's something to this music thing. And, and like I said, I played, you know, from the fifth to the eighth grade and then I switched to the saxophone and got to, went to Smith's and, you know, got kicked out of band <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, ninth grade year. But, uh, but that motivated me to be become the player that I am today. And obviously, uh, you know, it was a good call because, you know, it's taken me all around the world. And like I said, I've recorded 11 CDs and, uh, you know, recording more and playing on other people's projects. And I just love what I do. I'm very passionate about it. And, um, you know, I got a chance to play for President Barack Obama at, uh, you know, 2013 inauguration, one of the balls. And That's so, nice. Yeah, so I did that. And, you know, I've been on shows with uh, opening up for Frankie Beverly and Mays, Charlie Wilson, mm -hmm. Kenny Lattimore, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, Peebo Bryson, a lot of you know, a lot of different artists, uh, the Manhattans, and you know, just all kinds of things. And uh, wouldn't trade it for the world. And mm -hmm. it really, music brings me happiness, mm -hmm. you know, uh, along with meeting people. And it's just a good way to, you know, no matter what you are going through in life, you could be uh, really, really having a, a difficult time. And you can take music and, you know, hear a song and it can just take your mind off of what you're dealing with at the moment. And, uh, so it's been a it's been a saving grace for me, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. And um, hey, I'm just going, uh, you know, as long as God allows me, I'm gonna keep on keep on playing. Although, you know, one time I used to think about uh, never retiring. You know, you mm -hmm. think about oh, I'm gonna do this forever, and you know, of course, I still, you know, I'm gonna do it as long as God will allow me. But as I've gotten older, I realize, hmm, you know, what would I be doing if I wasn't playing music mm -hmm. or you know, you know, once you reach a certain age, am I going to want to get on an airplane and travel across the country, you know, and you, you get off the plane and you have to go right straight to a job or a sound check. Mm -hmm. And, you know, your body's tired because you might be on East Coast time and you're over on the West Coast and it's three hours difference or if you're overseas, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, you can be in Europe and it's six hours difference. So um, those things can take a, an effect on you. Uh, as you get older, but again, you you know, every day we try to find something, you know, you, you find something that is, um, brings you passion, and for, like I said, for me, music does that, so mm -hmm. uh, as long as I'm having fun and enjoying it, and I can still bring love and make people feel good, uh, you know, and even if they don't feel good, mm -hmm. <laughs> make, make myself right. feel good, okay. and uh, you know, but I'm, I'm one of these people, I just, you know, anybody that truly knows me, uh, I'm about love and making people feel good and inspiring people. And, and that is if so I can't true. find anything positive to say to you to mm -hmm. keep you going, then uh, know that something is wrong with Reggie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Reggie, I know that you were born with cerebral palsy, mm -hmm. so let's mm -hmm. talk a little bit about that. Well, you know, I, I was born, like you said, with cerebral palsy, mm -hmm. but I never let that stop. Mm -hmm. uh, me from uh, becoming who God wanted me to become because, um, you know, we can all be, we're all born with something that can affect us. Um, but again, you know, uh, you never look at that as a setback. You know, you just, uh, it's important to fi find somebody to talk to who can say, okay, well, you may have this challenge, but let's, uh, you know, but you can still become a productive uh, person in society. And like I said, my mother was that for me. You know, my mother, she never let me give in to the excuse of having a disability. And, and you know, she always said, hey, you know, you, you're going to make something of your, your life. And, um, you know, although, you know, it is, a, you know, I like to say, hey, I have this, you know, I call it my uh, swag, cool, pimp, mm -hmm. <laughs> limp, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, but, uh, you know, it, hey, at the end of the day, I haven't let it stop me from doing what God has called me to do, and 
I use it to, you know, to inspire others and, and let people know that no matter what challenges we have, you, you can become anything you want to. Sometimes people, you know, can you know, put roadblocks up, but you just have mm -hmm. to knock them down and keep going. That's right. You know, so um, I, I, I've let it become my motivation and, um, and, you know, my drive to help others. And that's how, that's how I, you know, like I, like I stated earlier, you know, I, I'm going to take a setback and turn it into a setup for, for, for something else. I, I'll take the, the lemons and turn it into lemonade. But, but I'm, you know, I'm always going to find the high road and the, the positive. Like I said, when people go low and, you know, because even growing up, you know, sometimes kids, you know, they picked on me and said all kinds of things. But, um I, you know, at the time when you're a child, you don't understand a lot of things. But my mother, like I said, she was a big comfort. And she always told me, she said, hey, you know, let that be a motivating factor for, mm -hmm. for uh, doing something great with your life. And so that's, that's where I am. Speaking of mom and dad, I know that um, your father, of course, he's a great um, artist, musician as well. Yes, and, and, um, mm -hmm. you know, my dad, it's the person that gave me, uh, Ray Codrington gave me, um, you know, I, I like to say my musical gifts. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he was a trumpet player. Uh, he played with uh, Little Richard, Gladys Knight, mm -hmm. Jackie Wilson, Ike and Tina Turner. Um, he recorded on the first recording of, uh, he recorded with an artist by the name of Eddie Harris who uh, they wrote a very famous jazz standard called Freedom Jazz Dance. Played with a group called the JFK Quintet uh, with a saxophonist by the name of Andrew White that they recorded on Riverside Records and they got discovered by Cannonball Adderley, which Cannonball Adderley was a uh, very well-known, popular uh, jazz artist, um, traditional jazz artist back in the day. And, um, you know, he had a brother named Matt Adderley, but uh, that was what they called the bebop period of jazz, but uh, he did that. He also uh, gave Patti LaBelle uh, breathing lessons, you know, mm -hmm. when, when she was young. And, you know, he taught me a lot musically. And mm -hmm. although he's, you know, now getting up in age and having some health issues and, and, you know, memory issues. But, you know, hey, at the end of the day, you know, I owe my life and my musical career to him. and. Uh, you know, um, I look. I, I look at it, now. He tells me. He says, "Man, he says, he said every, everything that I showed you. You've just taken it and, and gone somewhere else with it." That's right. He said, "Now, he said, I don't even want to get on stage with it." I'm like, Ooh. "You can always get on the stage with exactly. it." Exactly. You know? mm -hmm. And um, I look at it like this. I mean, uh, if it were not for both of my parents, I wouldn't be the person that I am. So, uh, I like to say I get my my values and, and uh, all the things that are important in, in living morals, character, all those things from my mother. And I get my musical abilities from my dad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, best of both worlds. But hey, I'm, I'm just who God wants me to be. Okay, all right. Well, Reggie, of course, um, I wish you well. Thank, Thank you. you so much. In a moment, we'll wrap up, of course, for part one. Um, tell, tell us a little bit about um, subscribing to your channel. How do you subscribe to your channel? Well, there are many different ways to keep up with me. Uh, the biggest thing now, because the music industry has changed and we now have, you know, digital down, mm -hmm. downloading and everything, mm -hmm. um, you know, you can find me on uh, iTunes, okay. uh, Amazon, um, Spotify, all these things. But the biggest thing that I would like people to do is go to YouTube mm -hmm and go to Reggie Codrington, the last name is spelled C-O-D-R-I-N-G-T-O-N, and there's a, you scroll, once you punch that in on YouTube, you mm -hmm. scroll down, there's a little red button that says subscribe. Okay. And people could just hit the subscribe button and share and talk about me with other people, and then maybe one day I can have a million views on okay. something. Okay, great, know? all right. But a lot of times, you know, um, jazz is not as popular or smooth jazz, mm -hmm. but 
as you get older, you're going to find you're going to mm -hmm. want some music to mellow you out. Exactly. After, after exactly. a hard day. Uh -huh. and, uh, okay. You know, hey, it's mm -hmm. just all about growing my fan base. So, yes, okay. subscribe right. to Reggie Codrington okay. on YouTube. Well, thank you, know. you, Reggie. Thank you so much. And thank you, viewing audience, for listening and looking at the Bronco Exchange. I'm your host, Dr. Shanessa Finner. Have a good one. Stranger, stranger.